what is up guys and welcome back to the channel guys had a special request somebody sent me this video we still back in the viking age got how the vikings changed the english language this is definitely gonna be interesting finna check this out appreciate you guys for sending out this recommendation y'all hit that subscribe button send out more recommendations for y'all boy did you know that about five percent of english words originate from old norse mm. yes those were the vikings these include common words such as give, get, knife, window, which means wind, eye, hmm? and husband, which means master of the house, though not wife, that comes from Anglo-Saxon. It is estimated that between 600 and 900 modern English words come from Old oh, wow. Norse. How did this happen? Today on Let Them Talk TV, we look at the history and if English is not your first language, I'll show you how you can improve your level of English and your understanding of English with words and expressions of Viking origin. So get into your long ship. If you don't have a long ship, then a chair will do and let's go. Hey, right, you know, I got a nice chair, but... I right, this is definitely gonna be interesting. Even though English is my first language, hey, it's still more that I can learn. Still more that I can understand about the English language. A chair will do, and let's go. Let them talk. Now, TV. As you can see from this chart, Old Norse makes up about five percent of English words. Mm. Far less than Old English, also called Anglo-Saxon, or French, or Latin, but nevertheless a quite significant Saxon. amount. And some of the most common words in the English language are from Old Norse. They are given huh. an ugly steak knife. They are just made up a sentence, almost <laughs> entirely made up of Old Norse. I mean, you really could make a sentence with all this. Mm, definitely some words we use in our everyday talk, everyday communication. Norse vocabulary as well as are they are and they, their, and them. So really fundamental words. By the way, I explain why I use these statistics in a separate video. Definitely check I'm it out to check that out. to know more about the origin of English mm. words. Back to the Vikings. Let's start with a little linguistic history <laughs> of linguistic Britain. History. Now, Britain had been invaded several times before the Vikings arrived. Various Celtic tribes inhabited these islands from the first millennium BC, and they were called the Britons. They spoke a Celtic language, which historians refer to as a Britonic. Britonic? The Britonic language was the ancestor of the Celtic languages, which you still find in the British islands today. Wow. Welsh and Scots Gaelic and Irish, as well as Breton in Brittany and France, and other Celtic languages include Manx, spoken on Manx. the Isle of Man, and Hornish, spoken in Cornwall. And these two languages had all but become extinct, but there has been an effort to revive them in recent years. In AD 43, the Romans invaded, and they stuck around for about 400 years, Dang. finally abandoning these shores in AD 410. A huge number of English words entered English through Latin, but only mm. a very small number of these words can be traced back to the Roman occupation. The vast majority entered the language much later, especially after the Norman conquest of 1066. Let's move on to the next part of our linguistic journey. I think this is amazing that uh, we got words that come from generate back in like, 400 AD and all that and I, it's weird to me that most Americans still believe that the English language came from America that's that's the crazy thing right there conquest of 1066 let's move on to the next part of our linguistic journey and that is the migration of perhaps invasions of Germanic tribes oh. to Britain these took place after the departure of the Romans until the early 8th century and these were the Angles the Saxons and the Jutes amongst other tribes but we'll refer to them here as the Anglo-Saxons during this period Celtic tribes got 
kind of squeezed out or pushed to the west, mm -hmm. to the western part of England, to Wales, Cornwall and parts of Scotland. And the Angles and the Saxons gave us their language. Anglo-Saxon, which as I think I, I heard that before as Old English. I think I heard that in another video is kind of just describing what the Old English was Anglo-Saxon. And if you look at our chart, it makes up about 30% of English mm. words, which can be traced back to Anglo-Saxon or Old English. Most, but not all of the most basic words come from Anglo-Saxon, the verb to be, the conjunctions, and, but, prepositions, okay. with, of, etc., and much more. And if you want to know more about the Scots language, check out this video here. check that out. Vikings. Is this a movie? I feel like somebody told me about if this is a movie. I feel like somebody mentioned this to me. And finally, we get to the Vikings. When exactly the Vikings arrived in Britain is a matter of historical debate, but most historians put it at the raiding of the monastery at Lindisfarne in 793. Over the next few centuries, the Vikings consolidated their hold on Britain. England got divided into the areas controlled by the Vikings mm -hmm. and the areas controlled by the Anglo-Saxons. The Viking controlled areas became known as the Dane law. Look at this Dane map. Law. It shows how much land the Vikings controlled at their peak at the time of Alfred Wait the a Great. British, uh, the Dane law. So they're known as the Dane. Oh, they got a good amount right there. The Anglo-Saxon king in 888, Wessex was controlled by Alfred, but the rest of the country was controlled by the Vikings. Mm. The Vikings first conquered England more than 1,200 years ago. But if we look at this map of modern Britain, we'll see that the names of Scandinavian towns wow. and settlements are still with us today in the areas once under the Dane law. For example, so are some of these named after Vikings? Some of these, y'all let me know in the comments. Was some of these uh, cities named after like actual Viking names or tribes? B meant a village, such as in Derby. Barra meant fortress, such as in Scarborough. Oh. Kirk meant church, such as in Fulkirk. Kirk. Ness meant headland, such as in Skegness. Wow. Thorpe meant farm, such as in Scunthorpe. And Toft meant homestead such as in Lowestoft. Oh. Surnames ending son, such as Peterson, Hold Johnson, up. Donaldson, are Viking. And to this day, the prevalence of these names are- Hey, hold up. I, I might be part of the Viking lineage. My last name is Wilson. I don't know if y'all knew that or not, but my last name is actually Wilson. D'Artanen Wilson. Hold up. I might have I might have a little Viking in me. I don't know. Donaldson. Are Viking and to this day the prevalence of these names are higher in the That's areas crazy. Once controlled by the Vikings. Wow. So, that is crazy. I'm over here. Wow. I know some Anderson man. I might I'm I might have some ancestor Vikings in my family. Possibly, it's a possible. And to this day, the prevalence of these names are higher in the areas once controlled by the Vikings. So how has Old Norse influenced modern English? The Vikings ruled and colonized large areas of England from the 9th to the 11th centuries. The rest of England was ruled by Anglo-Saxons. However, the king in the Dane law might have been Viking, but Anglo-Saxon mm. villages and towns continued to exist alongside Viking settlements. There was significant trade between the Dane law and Mercia, wow. the Anglo-Saxon part. The Vikings would have interacted with the Anglo-Saxons on a daily basis. Mm. There would have been intermarriages. There would have been children who were bilingual in both languages. Wow. They mixed at every level. Anglo-Saxons and Old Norse were similar languages. They are both Germanic languages. Anglo-Saxon is West Germanic and Old Norse North Germanic or Scandinavian. So they could have understood each mm -hmm. other to some degree how much so is hard to tell and what happens when two people who speak similar languages come together a modern day equivalent would be a spaniard and an italian oh. or a german and a dutch speaker 
Well, they simplify their languages. They talk in a way that makes it easy for the interlocutor to wow. understand. Oh, I think that's amazing that, you know, because I, I have seen some Dutch and some German and just looking at that, like that, there are a bunch of them that do kind of relate. Like even when I was looking, uh, when I was learning Swedish, some of the words they did, they did kind of relate even to the English language that was in Swedish. So like, I'd be surprised how close certain words are to each each language. That makes it easy for the interlocutor to understand. Old English was a complex language. It was a highly inflected language which means that the words change according to person, mm. gender, number, mood, voice. Old English had masculine, feminine and neuter nouns. By the 13th century, wow. there had been an enormous simplification of English and all this was gone. Modern English is an analytical language, which means that sentences are based more on word order and prepositions. Mm -hmm. In modern English, there is no grammatical gender, unlike other European languages. Gender only continues to exist for nouns referring to persons of a particular sex, mm -hmm. such as widow, widower, or waiter, waitress. Grammatical mm -hmm. cases no longer exist in modern English, with the exception of the Saxon genitive, also known as the possessive case that's why we say bob's guitar and not the guitar of bob mm. anglo-saxon grammar was more complex than old norse but the mixing of communities led to its simplification most linguists I feel like that simplification probably came to like how we call or there's certain words that we use we call it slang or you know we kind of shorten it up and still kind of know what it means of communities led to its simplification. Most linguists consider English to be a West Germanic language, Africans. along with German and Dutch, and then this branches off to the Anglo-Frisian group, which includes English, Frisian, and Scots. Modern English, it is argued, is a direct descendant of Anglo-Saxon, mm -hmm. with a huge amount of French and Latin vocabulary thrown in. Do watch our other video for more on the French influence mm. on English. Most linguists consider Old Norse to have influenced modern English only to a limited extent, and that essentially English is still a West Germanic language. However, there is a theory that English is in fact a Scandinavian language, mm. and that it should be classified in the same way wow. as Swedish, Danish, Norwegian, Fairways. See, and I was just mentioning it. I told you, like, they, certain words, there's certain words, of course, like, they kind of look close. That's why I say, like, with most, with the different languages, some of them, like, are close to the English language when it comes to certain words, like, at least with the spelling. So that's how, when it came to Swedish, uh, learning, for me, learning Swedish, I kind of knew certain words already because it kind of was already spelled out or the way when you pronounce it, it already sounded like that word in English and Icelandic. The argument goes as follows. Modern English is not a Germanic language influenced by Old Norse with a large French vocabulary, but rather a Scandinavian mm -hmm. language influenced by Anglo-Saxon, of course, a large French influence. They say that Old English died out, but contributed a great deal of vocabulary to modern English. But the Danes, or Vikings or whatever we call them ruled England for a mm. long time and they point out that the area where modern English developed was the South East Midlands region wow. and this was the most densely populated area by the Danes mm -mm. these were the areas today around Leicester and Peterborough and these have been declared by some linguists as the birthplace of modern standard English. Nice. It was the largest and most prosperous area of England. It's far easier for a Norwegian to learn English than even for a German or a Dutch person. Wow. And the reason for this is that its structure is so remarkably similar. The argument was... For See, I, um, 
I believe I had some people in the comments that were even telling me, like, in the Scandinavian country, like, if you only speak English, you you would still be able to make it around, you know. Knowing some Swedish or knowing some Norwegian, uh, the language, it can help. But if you if you know English or speak English well, understand English well, you'll be fine. Is that its structure is so remarkably similar. The argument was put forward by Jan Terje Falund, professor of linguistics at the University of Oslo. Mm. This is what he says. There are many English words that resemble ours, but there is something more. Its fundamental structure is strikingly similar to Norwegian. We avoid many of the usual mistakes because the grammar is more or less the mm. same. Norwegians find it easy to learn English because of the similarities to their language. Nice. We often find that when grammar in modern English is different from other West Germanic languages, such as Frisian, our supposed closest cousin, or Dutch. It's the same as in the Scandinavian language. It's very unusual for a language to borrow syntax from another language. For example, word order in English and Scandinavian. Hold up. Let me see. Let me see. The... So I have read the book Eghar Lespoka Each. I mean, that's much. I probably butchered those words, but uh, I mean, Boca book, butch. Okay, that's kind of. Uh, I probably, I probably would know. That's, that's pretty close. That's pretty close. The object is placed after the verb. I have read the book. Jeg har læst Boca. German and Dutch and Old English put the verb at the end. Ich habe das Buch gelesen. Ich habe English das and Buch. Scandinavian can have a preposition at the end of the sentence. This we talked about. Dette har vi snakket om. English and Scandinavian can have a split infinitive. Mm. That is when we insert a word between the infinitive marker and the verb. I promise to never do it again. Jeg lover å ikke gjøre det igjen. Group genitive. The Queen of England's hat. Dronninga of England's hat. All wow. of this is impossible in German or Dutch, and these kind of structures are very unlikely change within a language. The only reasonable explanation then is that English is in fact a Scandinavian language, mm -hmm. and the continuation of the Norwegian Danish language, which was used in England during the Middle Ages. Wow. But why the inhabitants of the British Isles chose the Scandinavian grammar is something we can only... Guess. So he tell us basically English came from, came from Scandinavia in which the English, England, adopted it from them. Hmm. Wow. That, that, that's very, very interesting. That's very interesting. on. So, I think so now it's like you gotta ask the question, like you know, when they come to uh, Americans, asking them where they, where does the English language come from, and now it's, you gotta ask, you know, the English, where did y'all get it from? You know, did it start there? Obviously, is it was adopted from Scandinavia. This is a Scandinavian language. That was an well, interesting frankly, fact, right there. I have no idea. I read the debate with interest, but as I don't know any Scandinavian or Germanic language. Apart from English, I can't really say. But let us know in the comments what mm. you think. Let's look be, at that's the interesting. More that's interesting. Vocabulary and an English idiom which is over a thousand years Whoa. old. First of all, I want to show you how close the vocabulary of Anglo Saxon and Old Norse were. Here are a few doublets. Doublets, doublets. are when two words from different languages have the same Did etymological stack, root. Chin, so in the case skin, of Anglo-Saxon and Old Norse, skirt, the root would have been Proto-Germanic. In modern English, mm. the meanings have something in common, but they are different. So we get, in Old English, ditch. In Old Norse, dyke. In Old English, shin. In Old Norse, skin. Mm. Mm. In Old English, shirt. In Old Norse, skirt. And also, shriek and screek and hole and hail. Wow. You'll notice that words with a sh sound 
often come from Old English, and the yeah. words with a sk sound come from Old huh. Norse. Other examples of this are ship and shall and fish from Old English, while sky, oh, scrape. scrape, and scrub come from mm. Old Norse. That was interesting. I'm sure you know that in English we have two words with a very similar meaning, ill and sick. sick. Yeah. Why do we have two words which are virtually interchangeable? I feel sick, I feel ill. Same meaning in the context of feeling unwell. So what's happening here? Sick is an Anglo-Saxon word mm. and has always had the meaning of, well, sick. <laughs> ill is an old Norse word and originally it meant bad and somewhere along the line it took on the meaning of sick. Mm. However, when we put ill before an adjective, it still has the meaning of bad or badly. For example, if you That's true. come into the room at the wrong moment, I'd it's say that your time. entrance was ill-timed. And there are many English... See, I knew that. I knew that. Look, I could have... You know, you know what I'm saying? But no, that, that's definitely interesting because there's even more words out there, you know... Uh, that's even have the same meaning, different spelling, different pronunciation, different words type of thing. But there's also in the English language, probably need to see a video on that, like where, you know how many times or different meanings that where has and different spelling that it has, but it sounds the same. It's like three, it's like three or four, probably more than that. But it's words which have this prefix ill. If you try to reach the top of the mountain wearing a t-shirt and flip-flops, I would say that you were ill-prepared for the climb. Mm. Or perhaps that you Not were prepared. ill advised if somebody told you that this was the suitable attire for a So hike. ill kind of can go with not as well. Not prepared. You know, not advised. If your hairdresser tries to cut your hair with a nail scissors, I'd say that he or she is ill-equipped. To do the job so bad not if you're walking in a dark alley late at night in a city you don't know you might feel ill at ease Ill if at your ease. neighbor robs a bank <laughs> i'd say that the money he got from the robbery are his ill gotten gains and this mm. is a noun by the way <laughs> other words Ill with this gains. ill prefix include ill afford i'm very busy i can ill afford wasting time so can't afford what we'll use can't afford this channel of course ill-fated the titanic now that was an ill-fated voyage ill-mannered mm. i've had enough of your ill-mannered children bad man get them away from me do you know the phrasal verb to egg on it means oh, yeah. to encourage in a bad way or to incite for example I'm not the type of person to get drunk and cause trouble, but my friends, Egg me my so-called yep. friends, egged me on. And you're thinking, what have eggs got to do with <laughs> encouraging? Dang, that's people? crazy. Because I'd def definitely be using that. Somebody egged you on to do that. On. And you're thinking, what have eggs that sound got to do crazy, with cause encouraging someone to do something in a bad way? Well, nothing actually. Egg in this context comes from the old Norse word egg, which means to incite. Egg. Actually, an egg, the actual egg that the hen lays, also comes from Old Norse. Hmm. Have you ever heard the idiom to get off scot free? Yeah. It means to escape without punishment. Uh, what does Scott, for example, what does Scott got to do with this? It means to escape without punishment. So, for example, the corrupt politician had 500 million euros in a Swiss bank account, but they decided not to press Amiga, charges. Amiga. He got away scot-free scot -free for a long time, until quite recently. I wondered what has a scot got to do with <laughs> All right. punishment? Well, nothing actually. The phrase has nothing to do with Scotland or Scottish people. Scot was the old Norse mm. word for attacks. And as far back as the 10th century, That's Scott crazy. was a municipal tax levied for poor relief. So somebody who didn't pay or was not liable to pay the tax was Scott free. So, yeah, wow. That is crazy. This expression is more than a thousand years old and it's still in use today in modern English. 
And here are some other words of Old Norse origin that you can use to spice up your vocabulary if you're learning English. Awkward. Awkward there are several yeah. meanings, one of which means to feel ill at ease, uncomfortable in a situation. For example, they asked me to make a speech, but I felt mm. a bit awkward speaking in public. To haggle. This means to, to negotiate usually for smaller items. I ain't never heard of haggle. I heard of awkward though. This means to negotiate usually for smaller items, the sort of thing you might do on holiday when you're in the market. They wanted $500 for the ring, but I managed to haggle them down to mm. 300. Back then. No, 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 I just paid you. What? Yeah. This bloke can't <laughs> haggle. Is that cool. big as dig is? To ransack, which means to go through a place in a disorderly and chaotic ransack, way. Ransack, never heard that one. used about thieves who break into a property. While mm. I was out, some thieves ransacked my apartment and stole the ring I had bought in the market. Dang. Gust. This so means a sudden and strong wind. Gust of wind. I, I think was I... walking down the road when a gust of well, wind yeah. carried yeah. away my hat muggy. muggy this is another word you might hear on the weather forecast. see i never knew it for like weather but i mean when somebody like staring at you in a certain way you call it a mean mug that's about it or a mug like a cup it means unpleasantly warm and humid the winters are mild in tokyo but the summers are hot and muggy mm -hmm. thwart thwart which means what? prevent someone from reaching their objective. We wanted to take our group on a world tour last year, but the COVID epidemic thwarted our mm. plans. Blunder, Blunder, which means a stupid mistake. Leaving the window open was a serious blunder, mm. and that's how the thieves got in and stole my ring. Dang. Team, which means to be full of or swarming with something. Oh, huh, because we have a different spelling for team. I mean, when you're talking about like sports and stuff like that, or you're talking about people gathering, which is T-E-A-M. So T-E-E-M is to be full of swarming with something. Let them talk TV is teeming with good videos about the English language. Mm -hmm. Stagger, another word with several meanings. And it can also mean great a great disciple. surprise. He was staggered to find out that it was his wife. I know what staggered is, but I didn't answer poison him. Oh. Snub, which means yeah. to be ignored. Not hey, definitely heard snub because if y'all go look at the top NBA 75 list, there was a lot of great players snubbed off of that list. And it always happened at the All-Star game too. In a nice way. Despite all my hard work, I was snubbed for a promotion when they gave the job to the boss's nephew, Nigel. Damn, Nigel. Come on, Nigel. God. So we can see that Old Norse had a great influence on modern English. But did you know that a descendant of Old Norse called Norn continued Norn. to be spoken on the British Isles until 1850? Mm. Norn was spoken in the far north of Scotland and on the Shetland Islands and the Orkney Islands. They formed part of the Kingdom of Norway wow. until 1470, after which they were pledged to Scotland. Gradually, the use of Norn declined. But as I said, the last native speaker died in the Shetland Islands in 1815. Dang. Today, only a few place names in Shetland and Orkney have Norn names, as well as a few dialect works. There has been an attempt to revive Norn, and this language is called Nino, 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 but it has so far met with limited success. But who knows, if it does, if it is successful, then the Viking tongue could soon be spoken once again wow. in the United Kingdom. And how cool would that be? That would be very that cool, that would be very Big cool. shout out to Inna Melena Hansen hmm. from Tromso. You got another video, region. what are the origins of English words? This was good. This was good. Y'all, I mean, of course, y'all let me know if it's fact or cap because, uh, you know, I mean, from my understanding of the video, he's telling us that English, the English language, language came from Scandinavia, you know. So, but this was definitely uh, an eye opener. Definitely learned. I learned something today. You know, that's always a good thing. Even learned that my last name Wilson. You know, 
comes from Viking surname. So that was definitely interesting. That was definitely interesting. But guys, that's all I have for this video. Y'all make sure y'all hit that subscribe button, send down those recommendations, and y'all be blessed, be the best, and be you. I'm out.